Yeah. Yeah, just a... Yeah, just a minute. Second, please. Who is it? Jeff Carter. Why, Jeff, my boy. How are you, Charlie? Oh, pizzicato, pal. Pizzicato. Come on in. You're a sight for sore eyes. How do you feel? What's going on over in Europe anyway? Ask. Everything in an uproar, huh? Come on, tell me all about it. See, it's a funny thing. You know, I, I got in the habit of doing my eating between meals. Had a little trouble at the hotel and moved in here just to get closer to business. Well, how is business? Oh, Charlie? sensational. But it'll get better. But let's talk about you. You know you're a stranger in these parts. You might at least have sent a guy a postal card saying have a wonderful time, wish you were there. X marks my room. Charlie, I've been in Lisbon trying to get a boat home, but I don't want to talk about that. I'm home. I know how to sing now. I don't want a job. But right now, I want to know where Millie and Danny are. You better have a drink. Charlie, where is Millie? I expected her to meet me at the boat with Danny, but she didn't. Why not? If you know, tell me, don't stall. Well, uh, well, how long has it been since you heard from Millie? Well, I heard from her right along. Not often, because the mails were slow where I was. What's this all about, Charlie? You, you better take a drink. What happened? Well, Jeff, Millie divorced Jade. My what? And all the time she cried on answering my letters. Not much about herself. It's all about Danny. Come on, take a drink. Take a drink. Any idea where she is? Yes. She's at the Morrison on Park Avenue. Penthouse, you know Millie, she always wanted that. Well, she's married again to a man named Sam Rankin, a Wall Street broker. You were just a step on her way up. Jeff, Jeff, wait. I'll take that brick for you. <laughs> Women. Women. Yes, sir. What is it? I want to talk to Mrs. Rankin. Is she expecting you, sir? No. Uh. Well, Millie. Oh, Jeff. Don't try to act. You don't know how. You never did. Well, Charlie was right. You knew what you wanted and you got it. Congratulations. Where's Danny? He's here. What's the matter? Doesn't your new husband want him around? He wouldn't be happy here. We entertain too much. He's cool. My husband can support him very much better than you can, ever could or ever will. That's fine. Well, let him support you, Millie, it's for the job. I can support my son, thanks. Where is he? I don't have to tell you. I think you'd better. The court gave me complete custody, you know. Danny has everything now. Everything but a mother. Now, I'm not going to ask you again. You can't bully me, Jeff. I'm not afraid of you. I've done nothing wrong. Maybe not according to your code. But I could cause quite a scandal by reopening the divorce case. You wouldn't want that, would you? Get on that phone over there and call the people who've got Danny and tell him I'm coming after him. Go ahead, Millie. After all, I am Danny's mother. Whistler should have painted you. Colonel Gregory, please. He's at Brockton. Brockton Military Academy. Hello, Colonel Gregory. This is Mrs. Samuel Rankin speaking. I'm calling about Danny. His father, Mr. Carter, is coming to see him. To take uh, him home with him. Go ahead, Millie, say it. Yeah, to, um, home with him. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Mrs. Rankin, boy. Will you have him with you long? I don't know, Colonel. I, I haven't seen Danny for such a long time. We'll sort of have to get acquainted all over again. I see. Now, we like the boy. And I think he likes the school. Come in. Sergeant Carter reporting, sir. At ease, Sergeant. Hi, soldier. Dad! 
did you get home? Just today. Oh, you've been gone away so long. <laughs> yeah, too long, but I'm home now to stay. You must get packed because you're going with me. Where, Dad? Home. Home? Yes. Now say goodbye to Colonel Gregory. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Colonel. Thank you very much, Colonel Gregory. It's a pleasure. Come on, son. Is this home? We'll soon find out, son. Come on. Jeff Carter, of all people on this wide earth. Oh, Mrs. Price, I wasn't sure you'd remember me. And why should I forget you? And this grown-up young man in his soldier suit. This is my son, Danny, Mrs. Price. How do you do, Mrs. Price? How do you do? Well, I never would have guessed it, and look at the size of him. Will you folks come to stay with me for a little while? Uh, excuse us a minute, son. Yes, sir. Mrs. Price, sir. See, I, I've been over in Europe studying voice, and I just got back today, and <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm flat broke. Where's the wife? She divorced me, remarried. How'd she do? She did all right, married a million. Mm -hmm. Now, about the room. Well, I'm all set, ready to work. I think I'll get a job in a few days. Opera? Yes. Do I get passes the night you open? Oh, you bet your life <laughs> you do, and it's for your hair. <laughs> I'll hold you to that now. Yeah. As for the room. I trusted you and Millie a long time ago, Jeff. And I'll trust you and the boy now. Oh, thank you. Come on, get your settled. All right. Come on, son. Why, where are the rest of your bags, Jeff? Why, well, I left them down at Charlie Grady's office. I'll pick them up uh, a little later. Oh, all right. This way. Well, does it look like home or don't it? It's very nice. Thank you very much. He's certainly got his manners. Well, when you hear the supper bed, you'll know what to do. And to think. When I first saw you, you were no bigger than that. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Price. Well, Danny. I guess this will be your bed here, son. You might start unpacking your things now. Yes, sir. Shall I change, Dad? No, you look great just as you are. Sort of different from where you've been living, isn't it, son? Yes, sir. Well, you'll get to like it here. Nice people. Yes, sir. I mean, sure, Dad. Oh, that's better. Now, look. As soon as we get organized, we've got a lot of big things to do together. You still like the movies, don't you? Oh, sure, Dad. And a little later, we'll, we'll start looking for a car so we can, so we can take trips and go fishing. How does that sound? Fine. Yeah, what a soldier. Thanks, Dad. good silverware goes. Oh, that's nothing. Get this one, boy. Here's one I slayed them with. Never miss. The boy wonder. <laughs> now, just eat your supper, son, and pay no attention to these weird characters. Yes, ma'am. My friends, as this seems to be a special occasion, 
I shall now give you the reading that has made me famous. My impression of the immortal Boots. Boots, we are foot slog slogging over Africa. Foot. That's enough. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but uh, that's enough. Uh, go on with your supper, folks. Sure can pound the ivories. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. How about singing one of them Italian songs you learned over in Europe? Sure. sure. Yes, Jeff. I'd love to hear you sing something. All right. I'll I'll sing my favorite song. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from Glen to Glen. And down the mountainside, the summer is gone, and all the roses are falling. It's you must go, and I. Gee, Dad, you sing great. Thanks, son. That's the best review I'll ever get. Well, Danny, what time are you supposed to be in bed, son? We have lights on at 8 o'clock at school. You'd better be getting undressed, then. <laughs> yes, sir. Dad? Yes, son? Don't I have to go to school anymore? Well, why shouldn't you go to school? Oh, I just wondered. No, oh, we'll find your school tomorrow. You see, I don't want anybody to say we'll let a thing slip just because you're living with me now. But you got to help me out now and then. How? Well, tell me the things to do in case I forget. Oh, I'll try very hard. Oh, that's good enough for me. Dan? Yes, sir? Could I ask you something? Oh, I don't see why not. Can't Mom be with us, too, like she used to be? not, son. Why not? Well, Danny, things like this happen to a lot of married people. You see, sometimes they find out they're happier living apart. Why, Dad? Well, you know your mother's a beautiful lady. Oh, sure. And she loves beautiful things, but Daddy hasn't been able to make enough money so far to be able to buy those beautiful things for her. So, well, Mother, wasn't happy living under those conditions. You see, I guess we just have to do the best we can. Understand, Danny? I guess so. It's kind of mixed up, isn't it, Dad? Sort of. 
Dad, there are tears in your eyes. No, no, not me, son. I'm, I'm just, just happy to see you again, that's all. Me too, Dad. Dad, hmm? we'll get things straightened out, huh, won't we? You bet your life we will. Now you run along and get undressed. You know, Charlie, Pacelli told me he'd hire me when I had enough European study on in my belt. I've been studying plenty. Well, don't worry about a thing. Leave everything to me. It's a cinch. But Shelly and me are just like that. Come on. How do you do? Read it. Representing Mr. Jefferson Carter to see Senor Pacelli. What about? What about? He's hiring singers, ain't he? Well, I got one of the best. Go on, tell him. Senor Pacelli never interviews singers. Well, how's he get them? He sends for them when he wants them. Well, I'll be Charlie. I signed for Senor Pacelli a number of years ago. In the meantime, I've been in Europe studying. Would you be kind enough to give him my name, please? Carter. Jeff Carter. And tell him if you don't grab Mr. Carter quick, I'll take him somewhere else. I got a dozen opera companies crazy to get my man right now. What is it? What is it? Oh, uh, where's the list of singers? Oh, right here, Signor Pacelli, right here. Oh, read the names quickly. Uh, Mimi Fiori. Uh, has been. Uh, Guillermo. Never was been. Armanda. Ah, Mimi, Mimi, Mimi. Oh, flat, fooey. Oh, why? Why? No more, no more. Oh, please. Why does this happen to me? Why? It's a conspiracy. But, Signor Pacelli. Always the same, always the same. Why are there no new voices? Somewhere on this earth, there must be a man whose voice is new. But do I find him? No. Does he come to me? No. Uh, Signor Pacelli, there's a man out there says his name is Grady. But can he sing? Well, I don't think so. Then will you tell me? He represents a singer. But who? A man by the name of Jeff Carter. He says you heard him sing several years ago. I do not remember. If I do not remember, he's not good. If he's not good, he's not good to me. I go to the baseball game. Oh, well, shall I tell Mr. Grady? Uh, tell him to tell his singer to go get a reputation. Then Pacelli will send for him. Charlie. You sure Pacelli knows you? Oh, sure, sure. Come on. Well, is uh, Mr. Pacelli ready to see us? <clears throat> Senor Pacelli is gone for the day. Gone? I didn't see him go. Nevertheless, he's gone. Oh, a new kind of show business, huh? Let me tell you something. For every ten minutes that guy keeps me waiting, it's going to cost him just that much more to get Mr. Jefferson Carter. Come on, Jeff. And don't forget it. getting home. Don't tell me you didn't see Pacelli today, either. After two weeks? Why, what's the matter with that man? Let you in on a secret, Mrs. Price. Pacelli hates singers. I want to pay you some rent, finally. How much do I owe you so far? Have I asked you for it? How much, please? Well, make it ten dollars. Two weeks board and room for two ten dollars? Oh, don't do that to me, Mrs. Price. It's bad enough anyhow. Here. Where's your watch? Oh, I, I left it to be repaired. Yes? Yes. Put this in your pocket. The time and place for pride. But this ain't it. Here. I, is Danny upstairs?
Dad? Hello, son. I'll take them for you. Thank you. Did you see Senor Pachai today? No. Gee, Dad, what's the matter with him? Don't he know who you are or what? Oh, Senor Pacelli's a busy man, very busy, son. He has a lot of work to do running a big opera company, hundreds of musicians, dozens of singers. And... But none of them can sing like you can, can they? I don't know, son. Having trouble with your homework? Oh, no, sir. I'm head of most of the kids in my room. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. What happened to your coat? Dad, I had a fight today. What about? Oh, nothing much. Kid said something about, well, kids that go to military school. He said they were sissies. So I had to, well, I guess you don't think I'm a sissy now. I see. Dad? Huh? Have you seen Mom? I guess she's awful busy, don't you? I guess so. Do you know her new husband? He's kind of a nice fella. Oh, and he's awful rich, too. I know. You ought to see where Mom lives now. Oh, it's swell. I know. I'd kind of like to see Mom sometime. Son. Yes, sir? Had you rather be with Mother than, than here with me? Not if you weren't there, too. Well, if you ever change your mind, be sure to let Dad know. Better run along down and wash up. Mrs. Price will be ringing the dinner bell any minute now. All right, sir. Find out if my son is here, and if he is, tell him to come and see me. Yes, Mrs. Rankin. <clears throat> Look. Oh, yes? What is it? Have you ever given my name to Signor Pacelli? Why, of course, every day. Is he ever going to see me? I'm sure I can't say. Which means no, doesn't it? Doesn't he want any new singers? I'm afraid I can't speak for Signor Pacelli. Oh, I see. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Gee, Mom, you look fine. You surprised to see me? Oh, well, kind of. I suppose your father's been telling you I didn't want to see you. Dad and me don't talk about you much. Oh, I see. You see, Dad's been very busy. Uh huh? Doing what? Fixing to sing at the opera. Oh, gee, Mom, can't Dad sing? Yes, yes, he sings very well. Don't you miss military school, Danny? Some, sometimes. But it's more fun living with Dad. Mom, would you get mad if I, if I ask you something? Well, what? Would you suppose maybe there's any chance of you and Dad and all of us could be back? Ah, a divorce, Danny. Yes. You're not mad because I ask you, are you, Mom? How did you tear your coat? Oh, I got in a fight at school. Mrs. Price fixed it for me. A fight, Daddy. Arthur, Fifth Avenue, please. We're going shopping. For what, Mom? I'm going to buy you some nice clothes, so. Oh.
Hi, soldier. What's all this? Presents from Mom. We've been shopping all afternoon, all over. You must have quite a day. We had a great time. Mom got me a new suit and some shoes and all kinds of stuff. I wish Mom had known you were home. You know what, Dad? Mom's got a new car, a limousine. Goes like that. How is your mother? Oh, about the same. You know what, Dad? Mom's sending the chauffeur with a car to give me Saturday. And I get to go over to her house and we're going to have a party. Just for me. Saturday? It's my birthday. Did you forget, Dad? Oh, of course not, son. I, I think that's fine of your mother. Only I wish you'd be there too, Dad. Oh, you'll have a wonderful time and Dad will be thinking of you. It's all right to go, though, isn't it? Oh, I think it's great, son. I think it's great. Well, come on, let's see what you got here. All right, Charlie. Hi, Jeff. What's new? Oh, no, not a thing. I don't know. I've tried everything, but nothing seems to break. I'm all right with tap dancers and acrobats, but for you? Well, I guess I'm just not the man. Well, if you can't get me a job, nobody else can, Charlie. I know that. I'm glad you feel that way about it, but for once in my life, I'm just about ready to quit. Well, I'm getting sort of discouraged myself. Charlie. I want to ask you a question that I should be able to answer myself. Do you think I should uh, let the boy go back with his mother and let her put him back in military school? You're going to get mad if I say yes. No. Well, then, Jeff, that's it. Look, a fellow in your place can't afford to carry any extra weight. I know it hurts to give the boy up, but I know and you know that you're in no spot to do the things for him she can. That's right. This is his birthday. Is that so? Yeah. His mother's having him over for the day. She's giving him a party. I suppose there'll be presents. Well, I asked you, you told me, that's that. No, wait a minute, Jeff. You got a great voice. There's a market for it. There's simply got to be. Now, I'm not quitting and I don't want you to quit either. Come on, let's just keep plugging a few days longer and see what happens. Now, is that okay with you? Okay, Charlie. Thanks. She sent you this note. What is it? Dear Danny, Mother is very sorry, but she won't be able to have you come to see her today. Oh, Danny. <laughs> oh. What a mother. Something wrong, Mrs. Price? I can't believe a mother would do such a thing. She would, and she did. Poor little fellow. All he gets for his birthday is a broken heart. I'll go upstairs and see if I can cheer him up a bit. I doubt if anyone can do that. At least I can try. Oh, so you're back here again, huh? Yes, I want to borrow some money on my music. Well, my friend, I'd like to do business with you, but uh, what good to me is music? Now, look, you've got my watch, you've got a suitcase full of my clothes and my overcoat. You might get stuck with those, but this music, this means everything in the world to me. I couldn't get a job without this. Look, I sang this role in Europe, and this one too. 
classics, huh? Well, I'm sorry, there ain't no market for that stuff. How much is that radio? Uh, this one? Ten dollars. Practically new. Look, my music's worth a lot more than that. Look, hold my music and let me have the radio, will you? What do you want with a radio? I have a son, 11 years old. This is his birthday. I've got to take him something. Well, how are you going to make a living if you haven't got your music? There's a lot more music in that radio than there is in me now. Well, I'm sorry. Can't do business like that. Take the boy his radio. I'll hold your music. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks so much. Oh, I'll be back for it. Don't worry. Mrs. Price. Danny got home yet? Well, he never left. What do you mean? Poor little fellow. He sat out there on the steps for hours, all dressed up. And his shoes polished so you could see your face in them. And then this note came. Well, I didn't even think Millie would pull a thing like that. Jeff, don't you ever let that woman get near the child again after what she did to him today. It's something he'll never forget as long as he lives. To refer to you by his price. Oh, yes, I know. Have you had any microphone experience? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Just stand there and don't talk too loudly. And uh, when I give you the go-ahead, read this. to kill nobody, never no time. But you heard laughing cowboy, Red Deer, he have to kill you. That's enough, that's enough. You'll do. Rehearsal Thursday 11, first performance Saturday. $50 a show. But Don't you want to hear me sing? This isn't a singing job, you're the new Red Deer. I'm what? You're playing the part of Red Deer in the Laughing Cowboy program, the American Stove Hour. But look, I'm a singer. I don't get this Indian business. Do you want the job or don't you? Yes. I want it. Thank you. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. Gee, you're home early. Did you see Mr. Pichella today? Nope. Mom called. Did she? Yeah, she's expecting me Saturday. And I could just come and stay the whole day. Isn't that swell? Oh, that's wonderful. Looks like Saturday's gonna be a great day for both of us. Hi, Dad. Son, did you ever hear of a radio program called Red Deer, Laughing Cowboy? Why, oh, oh, sure, Dad. Lots of times. All the time when I was at military school, we had a radio. Do you like it? Oh, it's great. Do you like Red Deer? Red Deer, the brave Indian? Mm -hmm. Why, if it wasn't for Red Deer, the Laughing Cowboy would never get out of anything. Oh, a handy fellow. Oh, he's very handy. Well, Danny, 
Yes, sir. There's going to be a new red deer. He isn't going to be killed, is he? No. Son, meet the new red deer. Huh? You red deer? Mm-hmm. Look here, son. You know, your dad used to be an actor before he tried to be an opera singer, so he's just going back to acting a while, playing the part of Red Deer, the brave Indian. But, but, Dad, honest? Honest. On the radio all the time? On the radio all the time, I, I hope. When do you start being Red Deer? Saturday. Can I tell the kids at school? If you want to. Is Red Deer going to sing now? No, just going to be an Indian. A swell Indian. Oh, thanks, son. Say, what kind of a fellow is this Red Deer? Oh, he's a wonderful fella. I know, but how does he talk? How does he sound? You're a red deer expert. I never heard him. I did. Want to be a uh, laughing cowboy? Me? Sure. But uh, he's an actor. <laughs> so are you. If you're not, there are a lot of generations have gone to waste. You know, your granddad played Shakespeare 30 seasons. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> As a matter of fact, your dad wasn't the worst actor in the world. Your mom acted, too. But mom was a dancer. She told me. Uh, actor's blood just the same. Come on. You right there. Now, I talk, and you talk, and I talk, and <laughs> maybe I got set for the rehearsal. Sound cue. Horses hooves fading on. Yeah, now, wait a minute. You don't play all the parts, you know. You, you just read the lines where the laughing cowboy talks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Laughing cowboy, coldly. Stand where you are. Don't nobody move a finger. I got you covered. Drop those guns. Hey, you want to smile when you say that, partner? Hmm? I'm sorry, son. I guess I'd better stick to the script. Go on. Uh, um, sound, oncoming who's? Here comes Red Deer now. Go on, Ed, you talk now. Oh, oh yeah. That isn't a very good war hoop. Well, what's wrong with my war hoop? It didn't scare me. Oh, I see. Look, son. As actor to actor, I'll tell you a secret. Only ham actors resent criticism. But what's a ham? Well, I, I certainly hope I'm not one. You see, acting is just pretending, for example. You pretend to be somebody you aren't, or to mean something that you don't mean at all, really. If the audience believes you, Acting. If they don't believe you, then you're not an actor. That's the secret. Understand? Yes, sir. But if you act whether you need to act or not, then you're a ham. See? Y yes, sir. All right. Listen. If you ever catch me being a ham, you let me know, and I'll let you know, too. Oh, all right. Come on, son. Take it now. It's your turn. Oh, stand where you are. Don't nobody move. I got you covered. Drop them guns and don't hesitate. We're surrounded now. What's the matter, son? You don't sound like Red Deer. Why not? Well, well, Red Deer kind of scares you. Well, give me a rough idea. You want me to? Son, if the critics no like, Red Deer no eat. Come on, give me that war hoop. Come on. See what you mean, all right. For mercy's sake, what's going on here? Oh, it's all right, Miss Price. Just a couple of actors rehearsing, that's all. Rehearsing for what? For my job. Did you get it? We're all set. Oh. Be back in a minute, son. Come on, I'll tell you all about it. Mrs. Price, I finally quit kidding myself about Pacelli. From now on, I'm going to be an actor again. I'm going to play the part of Red Deer in the Laughing Cowboy program. What do you mean? I sent you over there so they could hear you sing. Oh, they'll never hear me sing on this program. After all, it's a job, and that's what I need. Does that mean you're going to give up your career? What career? After all you've gone through to get to be an opera singer? Look, I lost my wife, and I almost lost my son trying to be a singer. From now on, all I want is a job, a steady job, so I can keep my son. Now, don't you worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. <coughs> oh, 
I, I beg your pardon, sir. Well, what is it? Pick. Aren't you Raffaele Almonte? Yes, I am Almonte. What did well, you I want my to... autograph? Quick, please. Uh, they're waiting for me. The orchestra, everybody. I just wanted to meet you, uh, senor. I've heard so much about you. I used to listen to your records a lot while I was studying. You're singing? Yes, I... Well, uh, that is, I did. The greatest voice in opera, Pacelli's crazy to get him the kind of voice they ought to have in opera instead of some of those has-beens they've been hiring lately. You're speaking to a monkey. Well, so what? Meet a real singer. No, no, I'm insulted. Go away, senor. Go away, go away. Uh, I'm terribly... <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nice work, Charlie. Well, what'd I do? Al Monte only gets a thousand a week on the air. I read in the paper this morning, Pacelli signed him up for another season. What do you mean, that guy? That guy. You mean that's the kind of opposition you're up against? Mister, you're a cinch. No, Charlie. Alamont is still a big name, and he's got the job. You're not going to worry about that fellow, are you? Nope, I just wish I was him, that's all. Forget about it. Look, son, Mr. Grader will get a cab and take you over to your mother's. I've got to get inside. This rehearsal is going to be plenty tough. And to tell you the truth, Charlie, I've got stage fright. 5.15 this is going to be a big minute for me. Yeah. You'll be all right. I'll bet you're going to be the best red deer they ever had. I studied with a great teacher. Thanks, Dad. I'm going to listen to the program. I'm going to ask Mom if she won't listen, too. Have a good time, son. I will, Dad. I'll see you at home tonight, huh? Yes, sir, and good luck. That's my sentiments, too. If you've got to be an Indian, be a good Indian. And I know you will be. Thanks, Charlie. Goodbye. So long, Dad. Come in. Sam, what are you doing home? I decided to take the day off. Oh, thank you, Marie. Sibia, madame. Did a little shopping on the way home. Oh, darling, now don't tell me you've been buying more things for me. Really, you shouldn't. No, these are for Danny, for his birthday. Sorry I'm a week late, but you didn't tell me. Sam, I think it's very foolish of you. Oh, I don't think so. I like that boy. Wish he liked me. Incidentally, he's due here any minute. Shouldn't you be dressed and ready when he gets here? I'll dress in a minute. Marie. I'll try that dark nail polish tonight. Really? Oh, how do you do, Master Daddy? Come in. Thank you. Hello, Danny. Good afternoon, sir. Is, is my mother? She'll be with us in a few minutes. Oh. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you, sir. That's good. Let's go sit down, eh? All right, sir. What are you doing with yourself these days? Nothing much. Hmm. Here we are. How's school? All right, thank you. Playing any baseball? No, sir. Why not? Don't you like baseball? Well, you see, I don't have much time. Right after school, I go home and help my dad. Help your father do what, Danny? Well, he says I'm a very good audience. For what? From today on, Dad's Red Deer on the radio. He's what? He's an actor. Oh, I thought your father was a singer. Oh, he gave that up. This is much better. He's Red Deer now. Red Deer the brave Indian. He, uh, Dad and me rehearse together, so he'll do Red Deer just right. And... I'm learned to act, too. Dad says I got actor's blood in my veins. Don't you ever listen to The Laughing Cowboy? No, I, I don't think so, Danny. What is it? Well, it's a big, swell radio program. It's on every Saturday afternoon at 5.15. Today's Dad's first time in the show. It'll be all right if I listen at 5.15, won't it, Mr. Rankin? Well, I don't see why not. Well, you see, Dad's the brave Indian that's always rescuing The Laughing Cowboy. And everybody. <laughs> you don't want to kill anybody, but sometimes he has to, just to save people. Hello, Danny. Mom! Well, you're just in time, Millie. Now we can open the presents. Presents? Yes. Your mother and I thought better late than never. Didn't we, Millie? Yes, of course. Now, you sit over there, Danny. Thank you. Now, you open this one, and I'll open this one. What all this stuff is? Oh, gee! Can't you say thank you, Danny? Huh? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rankin. Thank you very, very much. Oh, forget it. Now, uh, let's see what else we have here, eh? Oh, oh. I
That fellow's a real actor. Oh, Jeff. Hey, you back? Yeah, and with money on the mind. A fellow with a touring opera company was waiting in my office when I got back there. Look, Charlie, the big boss, Mr. Trimble, just listened to the rehearsal. He thinks I'm okay, so he's going to give me a contract for 39 weeks. And they pay every Wednesday. So that takes care of the touring opera company. Yes, and it takes care of you, Jeff, the wrong way. You want to be an Indian all your life, you don't. Now, I've got this fellow steamed up to where he wants you. You and nobody else. But he's got to give his decision between now and Monday. Well, tell him to get somebody else. Now, wait a minute. You're giving up the greatest chance you'll ever have, and for what? The most important thing in my life. No, you're wrong, Jeff. Now, if you'd seen that boy when he went over to his mother's, how tickled he was. He'll come home with his arms full of presents, you know that. Now, suppose you do get 50 bucks a week for playing Indians the rest of your life. You can't do much for the boy with that. I think we can get along all right, Charlie. Come on, I'm thirsty. But, Jeff, please. Now, this is the chance to have. Here's where I spend a month fishing every summer. You and I can have a lot of fun up there. Yes, sir. Mr. Rankin. Yes? What time is it? 512, why? Oh, that's right. You wanted to listen to that radio program, didn't you? I'm glad you reminded me. You don't have to listen if you don't want to, Mr. Rankin. Oh, but I'm anxious to hear your father. I'll get your mother. Now, you tune in the station, and I'll be right back. But Mom said she had a headache. Well, perhaps she's feeling better now. I'll go see. No, but it's getting late, and I thought someone might drop in. We already have a guest, you know. Well, it's time for Danny to go home. Does it bother you having your son around? Well, what's the matter with you, Sam? As far as I know, nothing. I'm trying to understand what's the matter with you. I don't know what you mean. You ought to know. Well, I think it's a little ridiculous for us to argue about my son. It's worse than ridiculous, my having to entertain the boy alone while you spend the afternoon in your room. He wants to listen to his father on the radio. Well, I don't. It won't hurt you any. It might make the boy feel better. I think you'd better join us. All right, Sam. If you insist upon making an issue of it. Thank you. Evans, we're not at home to anyone. Very good, sir. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Evans. I'm, uh, Evans. Oh, Evans. Hello, Evans. How about a drink? Yes, sir. I get the flock of drinks. Very good, sir. Yes. So you were an expecting guest. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. Quite an occasion finding you home, Sam. Yes. Well, what does a girl have to do to get a drink around? I already told Evans to get us some. Oh, I'm good. quite sure Evans will take care of it. Good old Evans. Oh, I can really use a watch, mm. too, and I'm not uh, kidding. Oh. This requires the hands of an expert. <laughs> I'll take care of this. And expert, cocktails for everybody. Uh, that's fair. Oh, not for me, thanks. Uh, the last one I had at Tom's was terrific. I'll take whiskey. <laughs> and with All right. I ought to chase her, Barbara. What about you, Sam? <laughs> uh, nothing for me, thanks. I know what you want, Millie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, this is what's really good. Here you are. The you finest martinis in town. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, I tell you. Uh, Millie, what do you think? <laughs> Did you get your station, Danny? Yes, sir. Here you are. Well, I'm going to do music, honey. I came over here to dance. Oh, for you. Come on. All right, here. It's on the air. Well, there's another radio in the kitchen, Danny. He'll listen right here. Millie, is this your little boy? He's cute. Hi, fella. <laughs> Hello, little Why boy. You What's your name, honey? Danny, say, how do you do? How do you do? Hello. Danny wants to listen to a program called The Laughing Cowboy. And so do I. The Laughing what? The Laughing Cowboy. My dad's Red Deer, the brave Indian. Now, wait a second. Let me get this straight. Uh, your dad is an Indian? No, Danny's father is an actor. He plays Red Deer on the program he wants to hear. If I help my dad rehearse, um, today's the day Red Deer rescues the drowning girl. Uh, her uh, father owns a Lazy W ranch, but they're a gold mine. And um, Snake Long and his gang want the ranch. So they, um, well, kind of stole or kidnapped. Um, Nancy Lincoln uh, took her a prisoner, but she, uh, but she jumped in a river trying to get away. But she can't swim. And Red and uh, the Laughing Cowboy can't um, rescue her because they got him tied up in Dead Man's Cave. But Red Deer comes to the rescue. Now listen. 515, and the American Stove Hour presents the Laughing Cowboy and his friend Red Deer, the brave Indian. Hey, look out. Scatter. 
Take cover. There comes the engine. Don't let him get the girl. Start shoot. Kill that engine. Here comes my dad. Me. Red Deer. Laughing Red, Red Deer. Say, <laughs> oh, no that's kill. awful. We, we have kill. to listen to that. Get the engine. You yeah. Turn it off. Get some music. We want to dance. Red Deer, fix you. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not drunk enough for this. <laughs> he not want to kill nobody. How about another drink, Barbara? Get out. Seth. What did you say? I said get out. Get out before I throw you out. And don't come back. Sam, you're talking to my friends. Yes, I know. But I'm also thinking about your son. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, we'll go. Come on, dear. Where are you going? To talk to Danny. If he'll talk to me after what's happened. Where are you going? Oh, Mr. Rankin. I'm going home. I want to see Dad. It's a long walk to your house, Danny. Hadn't you better get in the cab and let me take you home? There's a radio. We can listen to Red Deer on the way if you want to. No, thank you. I just as soon walk. I'd rather. Hi, soldier. Home rather late, aren't you? Is it late? It's almost dinner time. I, I guess I was enjoying myself so much, I didn't notice the time. So I had a good time, hmm? Oh, great. Well, that's fine. Did you, uh, did you hear the program today? <laughs> yes, sir. And, and you were swell. Hi, Jeff. Hello, Charlie. Sorry, Danny. Hello, Mr. Grady. I got to see your dad on business. Now what? Well, that, uh, that opera company fellow was over to see me again. Look, Charlie, I told you I'm not interested, and I'm not. Yeah, but you will be. Now, listen to this now. He'll deposit four weeks' pay in advance, 100 a week, and a percentage on the take. Why, he'll star you, Jeff. Photos, billing, and everything. Guarantee a build-up. Let you pick your own roles. It's a chance for your life. You'll never get another one like it. Jeff, be what you was born to be. Take this job and go places. For your own sake. Yeah, and for the boy's sake, too. Charlie, I'm going to keep on doing just exactly as I'm doing now. Thanks just the same. being Red Deer? Do I what? Do you really like being Red Deer? That's a good job, son. Easy work, and the checks don't bounce back. But do you like it, Dad? Why, don't you? Oh, yeah. Only I guess I'm not as interested in the Laughing Cowboy as much as I used to be. Wise. I suppose you heard Charlie Grady talking to me just now. He does talk pretty loud, doesn't he, son? Well... Danny, you know that job that Charlie was talking about? That's not for me. 
You know what I'd have to do? I'd have to travel all the time, sleep in hotels, be nothing but strange people. And I'd have to stand out on the stage with grease paint all over my face and, and light shining in my eyes. I'd have to sing my silly head off, whether I liked it or not. And stand out there and bow like a jack-in-the-box, waiting for the people to applaud. Oh, gee, Dad, wouldn't that be fun? Fun? Tell me that's hard work. And for what? Mr. Grady says $100 a week. That's a lot of money, isn't it, Dad? More than you get for being red, dear. Ah, uh, but expenses would eat it all up. But you'd rather be a singer than an actor, wouldn't you? I'd rather be red, dear. Take my word for it, son. I'd rather be red, dear. Now, don't you worry about a thing. Everything's going to be all right. Hey, there's a dinner bell. You better get dressed. Now, hurry up. Carter? Yes? My name is Rankin, Sam Rankin. We got some presents for your boy today. He forgot and left them at my home. I thought I'd bring them over. That's very kind of you. Oh, uh, Mr. Carter, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to talk over with you. All right. Just a second. Thank you. What is it, Mr. Rankin? Danny's a fine boy. I think so. I haven't known him very long, and I haven't had the opportunity to know him very well, but I've grown to like him as much as if he were my own son. Well, you've been very good to Danny, and I'm very grateful. I, I hope you bear no ill feelings toward me, Mr. Carter. I have nothing against you. Thank you. I trust you won't mind my saying so, but I believe Danny's future matters as much to me as, as it does to you. Possibly, but he is my son. Granted, but I, I wonder if we couldn't make some arrangement that would make things better for everyone concerned, especially for Danny. Well, what sort of arrangement? I can give the boy everything he wants and needs, the finest education money can buy, a real start in life. Just a minute, Mr. Rankin. Did his mother send you? No. She doesn't even know I'm here. This is just between you and me. I'd like to adopt Danny legally. I think the boy will be better off, and you'll be free to follow your career. I don't think the arrangement will work, Mr. Rankin. And as a matter of fact, I, I know it won't. But I can't believe that you'd ever have left Danny to go to Europe and study if singing wasn't the most important thing in your life. I admire you very much, Mr. Carter, for sacrificing a career and playing an Indian on a mediocre radio program in order to support your son. Well, I... I appreciate your interest in my son, Mr. Rankin, but I have made plans for Danny and me. And I have a feeling they're going to work out somehow. Well, if you ever need any help, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Carter. Good night.
Hi, soldier. Gee, I thought I heard somebody talking. Mr. Rankin was here and you left the presents you forgot. You can open them in the morning. I'd rather now. between you and me, now and always. We're always going to be on the level with each other. If we have something on our minds, we're going to come right out with it, man to man. That's right, isn't it? Sure, Dad. All right. I want to ask you a question. And I want you to answer me right out. And don't worry about hurting Daddy's feelings, because the only way you could hurt them would be to want something and hate to tell him. Would you rather go and live with Mr. Rankin and your mother? Well, oh, gee, Dad. Well, would you? You can if you if you want to. Well, well, it isn't much fun around here. And Mr. Rankin's got a big place to live in, and, and I'd have a room all to myself. And all I'd have to do is push a button if I wanted something, and a button would wait on me. Of course I'd like it there. I, I'd like it much better. Who wouldn't? I'd like it. <laughs> oh, and I tried, I tried. Yes, son. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> you, you said if you can't act so people believe you. you you're no good. You're just a hair <laughs> I guess I'm just a ham. No, son. The greatest actor in the world rehearses a long time before he plays the biggest scene in his life. Didn't you know that? Why, everything takes time. But we're all right, you and I. Oh, Dad, I love you so. <laughs> Red Deer got bad news for Laughing Cowboy. Red Deer see Killer Regan wait in ambush. Laughing Cowboy stay away from Last Chance River. Oh, gee, Dad, you're getting it better all the time. <laughs> no wonder, look who's coaching you. Look, son, as soon as the broadcast is over, Red Deer and Small Papoos go places, hmm? I always did want to go to Coney Island. Well, that's where you'll be less than an hour from now. Well, I gotta get in here now. Can't hold up rehearsals. That's very wrong when an actor holds up rehearsals, isn't it? You bet it is. Red Deer go. But Red Deer better come back. Okay, soldier. Oh, so you had me worried, senor. You know we go on the air in five minutes. What's the matter? Don't you see? I'm sick. I've been sick all day. I thought when I got here, I, I might feel better, but it's no use. You gotta call off the show. I could not sing. I must lie down, please. Please take me, man. Please. Hey, wait a minute, Almighty. You've got to sing. I can. Hey, mister, my dad can take his place. He's the greatest singer in the world. Of course he is. Run along. What do we do now? I'm going in and talk to him. He's got to go on. That's all there is to him. 
Only one thing to do, men. Kill the laughing cowboy. That's what I've been saying all along. We gotta get that Indian, too. He's bad medicine, that red deer. I'll take care of him. Leave him to me. Uh, wait a minute, folks. Let me see that last line. <laughs> Let's take it through again in this next rehearsal, and next time, cut it down. Hey, Dad! Bit. And project your voice. Oh, son, you know you shouldn't come in disturbing rehearsals like that. But, Dad, I gotta talk to you. I got it. It's terribly important. It's awful important. Mr. Trimble, excuse me. I'll be right back. Okay, make it stoppy. All right, should we go again? What is it, son? Senor Armani's sick, so he can't sing on the air. But you can take his place. You can sing better than Senor Armani ever could. But wait a minute. But I... you haven't got a minute to wait, Dad. Just as you said, the show must go on. Nobody sent for me. They just didn't know about you, that's all. Well, no go. You'll have to make an announcement. Hey, mister. Mister, I got a single for you. Better than Senor Armani ever was. What are you talking about, little boy? Oh, my dad. He's a great singer. He's singing Italy, France, and all, all over. Is that right? Well, I sing the usual baritone repertoire. Have you ever sung Herodiad? Many times. I'll take a chance. Come on. I'll be listening, Dad. I'll be listening. Armani's sick, so I can't go in the air. And Dad's gonna take his place right away. Okay, okay, I'll take care of it, Shelly. Yes, sir. Come on. One minute. Oh, we're on the air in one minute. I'm counting on you, Carter. Good luck. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, five o'clock, and once again, the gold and silver music hour is on the air. Evening of quality, America from East. Esperanza to drive, giving a better sea. Je donnerai mon âme 
pour toi, mon amour, mon espoir, vision, Marius, you are my friend. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yes. Come on. Oh, no. Sound all right? All right. Then you were dynamite. Sensational, as Mr. Gritty says. Oh, but she did. You were great. Thanks, son. You're going to sing some more in the air, aren't you? I've got it. Al Monty will be back for the next program. After you? Son, your dad has just begun and finished the shortest singing radio career in history. I've got to get back to Red Deer now. Can't they fix it so Red Deer could sing now? The Laughing Cowboys public probably isn't ready for that yet, son. Say, Clark, you did a great job. Hey, Cap! Wait! Wait for me! Wait for this me! This is him! This is Pacelli! Uh, I am Pacelli, yes. And you, you are? Yes, I've been telling you, Jeff. You're the guy that couldn't get in. Now they're coming to you. It makes a lot of difference when you got an agent like me. Oh, please, please, do not talk money. Now, we talk about art. All the time I look for you, and you are not there. Now I find you. I discover Say, you. As a matter of fact, Pacelli, I discovered him. You discover him? Come on, let's get out of here. Because my office, I make you famous. Charlie, my program. Oh, forget it. I'll get him another red deer in five minutes. Goodbye. Have a good time. Say, what about his Billy? How much for the pay, huh? Well, this oh, will... son, look. A contract with Signor Pacelli. Can you believe it? Huh? Oh, gee, Dad. Does that mean you're going to sing an opera now? Sure he is. What did I tell you? When I discover a guy he's in, goes right to the top. No, Charlie. Here's my discovery. Oh, soldier. From now on, we're going to do everything we know have a lot of fun doing it, too. No more red deers. Pacelli's fixing it up for the radio people. Oh, gosh, Dad, that's wonderful. Now, can we go to Coney Island? Can we? Come on, Charlie, we're going to Coney Island. Yeah, Jeff, do you mind if we eat first? I haven't had anything to eat since.